Hello and welcome to another episode of Space Engineers. And today is going to be more of a design episode as we are in the creative version of my world here and trying to figure out how to make a, I think an inchworm style little tunnel digger as I think that would be the coolest. And also after some trial and error, I think the easiest for me to build. So we'll leave this little elevator design, which we'll be making ever so shortly, probably in a couple episodes now that we have the elevator dug out. Uh, in my actual save, this entire area is all dug out and ready to go, and the elevator is as well. Everything that is white is dug out, where I'm going to get down to there, and then I can deploy my inchworm or I can deploy it this way, going out towards the city. Now, I did do some experiments and had some success here. As you can see, I've made a tunnel through some placed voxels with various um, rover versions of, you know, a tunnel builder. Thinking as many drills on it as I can, put some refineries and assemblers on it as well so that way it can take the stone that it is collecting and actively turn it into steel plates for me to be able to weld the road as I'm going along as I do have the line of welders at the front with a, a bit of storage on it and some thrusters to sort of give me that push to get through when I'm nice and heavy but I was finding that it was just a little too large for my tastes Realistically, what I want to do is get to the point where I have dug out the majority of the tunnel and then the fine edge work and trim, essentially, of the tunnel will be done by the drill and fill. So it was a little too large for my tastes with it being nine blocks wide. So I tried to do some eight block wide stuff and yeah, it just didn't work. So I decided we're going inchworm and made a uh, sort of proof of concept right here. So if I jump on in here, the idea being for this is that uh, we could use the landing gear as it is seen right there, or alternatively multiple connectors. But what we'll do is, for example, right here, I will connect up with the connector, disconnect with the landing gear, extend my piston out until it reaches its maximum distance and thankfully these are all nice block increments as I extend it once it is done connect it unlock my uh, connector and reverse my piston dragging me along back up to where it is now once I reach the end there with the piston fully retracted, I can relock the connector, unlock the landing gear, and extend again. The great part about this is that while I'm drilling, I will be always connected to the base. So that way, I don't really need to have any storage on my inchworm, I just need to um, make sure that this is all piped up properly, which I'll have to just set up a blueprint with uh, connectors at various stages along the process and make sure that, you know, that works. And I can make this thing fairly compact. It would be essentially this. However, on this piece, it would have a bunch of drills and it would also have a uh, uh, single, say, welder that would be there to weld up any connectors that I needed to connect to. So I think this will work. So we're going to do some uh, preliminary testing. I've got a piece of road right there that I want to do that testing on. So I'm going to leave my little prototype and uh, the, the bad part about the prototype was that it is only a single um, piston, which does not go very far because it is only like a few blocks that it extends. So we're going to be using the large pistons 
from the more piston stuff because they extend a hell of a lot longer. And if I do a couple of them, and I could even nest them if I wanted to, I would only have to have my connectors only every so many blocks. It would be much, much better. So, let's see. If I place this connector here, and then just to get the structure of this started, we'd have another connector there. Let's get a battery on both of those. Uh, ooh, that should actually be junction. There we go. So that'll actually be able to uh, connect when we're done here. And there. Good, good. Everybody happy? Yes, okay, good. There we go. Then we'll want a battery on this thing. Battery on the base just for now. And we can use this to connect lock. Excellent. All right. So now that those are locked and we have power, we can take that off. We can make this a ship. So now we have a little ship attached by connectors to there with connector uh, conveyor right there. Excellent. So now a nice long ass piston. And at its shortest distance, it's going to need to be able to connect the rear one for the front one to be able to go back out again. So right here, we are going to need more connectors. So essentially, at every increment of distance... Oh, unable to place. No, okay. You should be fine as long as I extend this a little bit, place it, and then drag it back. It, it's like that sometimes. Okay. Extend out a little bit. <laughs> place it there. And then let's reverse that back into place. And you should... Uh, you should line up. Yeah, there you go. You just didn't want to place on each other. That's all. But you are happy. And we can lock. Alright. So every so many blocks, I'm going to need a pair of connectors that are, in total, seven apart. So one connector at one and one connector at seven. All right, now we can unlock this bad boy. And I'll slap a cockpit on here so that we can do this a little bit easier. Let's name these up so I can actually know what the hell I'm doing. This will be connector front. And God, I love build vision for the easiness of being able to label this stuff. Connector back. And then, of course, piston is piston. So we'll jump into here. We'll put connector front very obviously at 1 and connector back very obviously at 9 so that it's hard to screw the pair up and then we'll put the piston with reverse right in the middle so if we we are currently not connected to the front okay so we want to extendo and we'll speed this thing up. So, ah, we're just testing. We can make this really fast. Make it like two meters a second. Ripping out there at top speed. And I can add multiple pistons in a row to this. Uh, if the um, connectors being too close to each other is an issue. All right, so there we go. So we're gonna need a connector there. And then one, two, three, four, five, six should be here, right? Because if I place something here and then back to there, that's seven. Yep, that's exactly what I needed. So I need a connector here and a connector there, but it's just being stubborn, so I'll go and retract it a little bit. And then place that. And then re-extendo until 
we can see that number one should be ready to lock. We lock number one, unlock number nine, press five, and start hauling myself forward. Excellent. Excellent. We'll make this even faster, because why not? Speed it up for the video. We haul ourselves forward. We go nine, one, five, and we're extending out again. So that means that there would be, because this is one whole step forward, connector with five in between, and then a connector with seven in between, repeating. Which is a fair amount of connectors, and I'd have to clean them up eventually at the end. It'd have to, um, you know, delete them, grind them down. Uh, underneath this, if we go underneath the pathway, we'd have to run, like, conveyor all along the underneath here, so that there would be a, a, a path for uh, the drills to uh, give their stone back to the base. It's doable. But let's, uh, let's ex let's make, let's add more pistons to this. And I could make this thing just longer. So we could, if we want to, get rid of those. And just put another piston on the front of this. And, you know... Is it probably work the best? Like I was thinking I could nest it and like put a whole bunch of pistons and stack them all up and do all sorts of crazy stuff. But really, do I have to do all of that work when I could just have the two pistons in a row? I mean, a pair of connectors every, uh, what will this be? So there'll be a connector there, a connector there, and that's every 26 blocks. That's actually not that bad. Yeah. That's not that bad. 26 blocks at a time. Every uh, extension is pretty good. Okay. So we've got that figured out. Let's retract these pistons here. Hold them back in nice and fast. Oh, I guess it's not going to be 26 blocks anymore, because it's, uh, it'll be here. These will be further apart because of that. Eh, whatever. Same difference. That is still 21 blocks. It's good enough for my purposes. This, I mean, realistically, I can do all this with the drill and fill mod, but we're making an inchworm because inchworms are cool. So. We're going to need the junction there, the connector, junction, and we need to extend this a little bit. Or probably just fully extend it because it's going really fast now. Put the connector on it, and suck it on back in. So that is going to be the basis of my drill. Now, when we actually are drilling out this entire space, oh god, this will be going way slower. And we're going to have this all on timers, so it'll be totally automatic. All I have to do is just, every time I press the button, it'll go one increment forward. Also, what I can do is, because this will access the base, I could theoretically have uh, nanobot drill like uh, repair on this so i could have build and repairs on this thing and it would automatically build the next section and i could even have the projection <laughs> on this thing itself uh it would be silly all right so let's just connect this up lock and then think about drills. Now, thankfully, one issue that I was having over here with all of my rovers 
is that I would just put so much weight in the front by having all of these different drills. Like, say, for example, here. Say I just wanted to completely fill this area in the front with drills. So it was wide enough to cover the entirety of the space that I needed to drill out in order for the rest of the rover to, to follow it. The drills were just so much weight. Yeah, that would happen. The the front of the ship would just hit the ground and back would tip up and I just barely got this one to stay on the ground. But thankfully, because we're doing hard connections with connectors, we don't need to worry about that as we're static. So we can essentially just have a wall of drills and who gives a shit? <laughs> We don't need to worry about anything. Now, I do want the uh, drill and fill mod to do the fine edging to this kind of stuff. So I don't want to go all the way out to, say, the full width there just yet. But if you're going to build your own tunnels, this is how you can get a nice straight tunnel without drill and fill. But this is just going to get the majority much faster than drill and fill could. So yeah, it'll dig out that portion of it. That looks pretty good. Now, what I could do is I could add a welder here and here and I believe that that welder will weld this block I'm pretty sure let's give that I wonder if I can test that uh, you're connected back there so it's okay if I shoot this up a little bit and damage it come on why are you no, hardly damaged. I need a better gun. Give me the elite one. There we go. Now. Does this fix it? Yes, it does. Excellent. So, having these welders here could quite quickly build up the connector I need and possibly if I lower them one more uh, might not mm, these drills might not be getting rid of every single piece of stone but at least the connector would be built and it'll at least uh, like that portion of it would and then I can make sure I can always have a connection point but for now we'll leave them off the design it's something that I can add in a bit we're just looking at the basis of list drills. So that works. And then underneath the ground here, let's do this in spectator camera, we'll just quickly run a nice long conveyor junction all the way along the center here, just so that we have an, a way to transfer materials out. Excellent. And at the back, we will put down some cargo. Get a few of these junctions. Oop, nope, not that, not that way. A few of these junctions going back, all connected up. And then we can throw down some cargo back here to hold the stone that we will drill as we do this test. Make sure that's all nicely connected. Yes, there is the connection inside there, but I'll throw down an extra one just in case. Not that I needed that, but it looked good. Excellent. So, what I can do is I can quickly go through and every so often here add some more connectors and some more conveyors. 
And then this thing should be absolutely wonderful to move forward. So I believe this would be the next spot, if I remember correctly. There should be a connector underneath there that that is uh, going to. And then this spot needs to be not there, because we need a little bit more in between them. It is currently 11 back, so 10, then one more. So there's the 10, one more, hold junction, then connector. Get rid of those. And we shall fill this with voxels, because that sounds awesome. So we take voxel hands, we get the voxel box, and we'll just align it up here. You can press K when you have the voxel out to get all of its little uh, width and height stuff. We'll just put it to 30-something. And uh, we'll just fill this thing with voxel. As much as we can. Now, it doesn't allow you to fill voxels near a ship, unfortunately. But that's okay. We just need to see if this will function for our test. So we have filled out the area with voxel. Ready to drill into this stone. So, we have disconnected from the front one. We're going to take these two pistons and put them into a group. And we're also going to take their speeds and massively lower them for now. We're going to figure out what the proper speed is for these in a moment. For the drills, we're also going to put those into a group. And our connector at the front needs to be renamed and rebound here. So this connector front. There we go. Excellent. So, connector front, connector back. We have our drills, we have our pistons. We are ready to rock. We just need to make sure we have them all on there. We'll go connector t -t front. Switch lock. In groups. We have our pistons, which we will reverse. And our drills. Uh, I'll put them there for now, which will toggle block on off. So if I toggle the blocks on, we should have plenty of spinning going on. Now, we are going to disconnect the front and extendo the pistons. Now, it is nice and slow because we don't want to, uh, to damage anything, but we can also take that and uh, decrease velocity and increase velocity for now so that I can finagle this a little bit. There's a little bit of jankiness because of the weight, so let's uh, take those pistons and share that inertia tensor so they're nice and tight. Just how we'd like them. That's a little weird. But here we are, pushing into this stone here, where the connectors all prepped for it. Oh my god, the anticipation about to hit the surface. And there they go. They start to drill their way into the area. Now, point one seems to be going well. Of course, there's two pistons, so it is actually point two in total speed. Don't want to do it too quickly. But that seems to be getting the vast majority of the tunnel being dug out. Which then I can use the, uh, the drill and fill to uh, clean up and make those nice, wonderful edges that I want with my tunnels. But looking at this, I wonder if I do this correctly, these might be clean enough edges that I can just make this thing a little bit wider and a little bit taller and just do that and not have to worry about doing drill and fill to clean it up. Hmm. But because we're connected, we should see in our inventory here 
that our large cargo is getting all the stone. So that way, I don't have to have any access on this piston rig beyond just the cockpit to control it and the um, battery to give it a little bit of power. Um, of course, if you disconnect both uh, connectors, you screw yourself. But that's okay. You won't do that. You're not that, not that silly. Now the question is, is are they going to damage this connector a whole bunch as they go over it? Because I don't want that to happen. We want our connector to be nice and usable still. And it's at 100%. Excellent. These are just barely scraping over top of it. Perfect clearance. Absolutely perfect. And that will want to connect for a short bit, but then oh, oh the magnetism. Is that what's holding it back? The magnetism here? What if I quickly connect? Oh, I don't want to change your name. Come on. I want to lock and unlock. Aha. Okay, so you need a little bit more strength. The uh, magnetism will be an issue. But that is all right. We are tunneling our way down with our intro. Do, 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 do. Oh man, this will make life so much easier. Although the bad part about this is that it's like... It's relatively low impact. I mean, it's not many resources to use to do this. It's essentially just the um, the drill heads, and the rest of it is just inconsequential. But it's like a conveyor, couple pistons, a cockpit, and a single battery, and just the majority of it is these silly, silly pistons. Not the pistons, silly um, drill heads. I wonder though, could I get away with less drill heads? Hmm. Testing will commence. Do I need this one? Or can I go like a pattern like that? I wonder. Can I save on drill heads like that? It seems to be working. I can. Although I don't know if I can do that on the side here. Say I got rid of this one. Is this side going to be as nice and clean? Because I can always just replace these with um, conveyor junctions or even some sort of tubing. Of course, I'm just trying to get the majority of the stuff out and not trying to be super clean, because I'll do this with drill and fill. But I can always just have the exterior loop and then just crisscross in the center with as minimum amount of drill heads as possible. Ah, whatever I try out in the future, it'll work out. But yeah, you can see there's a, a little bit of a uh, ridge here now that I've gotten this one. I've gotten rid of that one on the edge. So let's uh, put it back and turn it back on. Add it back into that group. Excellent. Alright, so now it is fully extended. It is over top of its spot there. And let me just uh, pick up this dropped stone. We can connect with the front. Disconnect from the back. Reverse the pistons to drag me forward. And speed up this whole process. Because this part can be fast. Because I'm just pulling the rear end of it up. <laughs> oh. oh, is that not... Uh... Is that not you? Come on, pistons. Come on. Good little piston. There you go. For some reason, you weren't doing it. 
But now you're doing it. Excellent. Nine is ready to lock. It's getting really dark in here. <laughs> I should probably add a light to these damn things. Uh, we'll just throw a spotlight on each side. That looks awesome. So now we can connect to the back. Unlock the front. Take these pistons and uh, again take them down to the 0 0.1. And then reverse again and start pushing further into the voxels. Excellent! Inchworm design has been finished. Of course, there's a bunch of little things I can add to this and uh, play around with it with the design of this um, drill head here at the front. You could add a rotor on it so it would spin. I would probably want to maybe even raise up where I'm connecting to this, to the center, so that I could have a more balanced design to it. But in all, that is essentially the design that I'm going to use to drill out a large portion of my tunnels. Then sick the drill and fill to clean the tunnels up, and then use the paver to come in here and build the floors. Now I could if I wanted to, because this is accessing the base as well, is get some welders. And I could, and I definitely could design it this way, that I'd have a line of welders like this. And anything underneath there would be uh, built up as I went. Which maybe I can finagle it so that it is like the right distance off of the, uh, the grids here. And whatever I'm blueprinting forward uh, will work out quite nicely. But I think what I'll do is blueprint out essentially just the conveyor tubes that I need. Like this, well, not, the, not, not, all, not all these injunctions, but do the appropriate spots for junctions, put tubes in between at every single interval, make a nice long conveyor blueprint for that project that blueprint out down a tunnel where i'm going to be building it build this contraption on top of it showing the method that i uh, used here and then just let her rip now when i actually do build this as we've already gone for talking about this for half an hour so we'll probably want to wrap this up soon when i actually do go and build this in uh, the survival playthrough what i will do is I know the pistons... Oh, I need to jump back into the cockpit here. I know the pistons full length is 35. So, at point one, it's going to take so many seconds in order to get out there. 350 seconds, it should be. So that is... Oh, God, like five... Five minutes? 240 is four minutes. So 300 is five minutes. So that's like five minutes and 50 seconds to get fully extended, which is a fair amount of distance, a fair amount of time. But essentially what I can do is I can set up a series of timer blocks that will do this automatically. So the first timer block will be... Uh, start drills, unlock the, the, the front connector, start the pistons, wait six minutes, so I have an extra 10 seconds. After six minutes, turn off drills, connect the front, disconnect the back, retract, wait six minutes, and then repeat. Or I could just have it that it doesn't repeat and it's just like one interval at a time and every 12 or so minutes I have to come back and press a button. But at least that way I can control how far it'll be going with every button press so I know it's not just going to uh, continue into oblivion and eventually dig through the entirety of the earth and pop out on the other side. Which, that would actually be kind of cool. <laughs> but, yeah, this is uh, the inchworm design 
or something very close to this that I'm going to be using in the playthrough. And uh, this is more of a design episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We can see here with all this inventory, we've got incredible quantities of stone in our large cargoes. Oh yes, 10 million. We can send all those back to our refineries and such, which we have outside and on the mobile field base and refine them for practically infinite stone that uh, we need to build all the little various bases. That's going to be it for now. Thanks for watching, and good hunting out there, space engineers. <laughs>